Hi, Jeremy. Um, can we just check on the injury situation for Saturday? Um, is Basuma going to be available? And what about Welbeck and Al Zate after Monday night? Um, Basuma making progress. Uh, that'll be a decision later on in the week. Uh, Danny's at the moment seeing a specialist, so again, we need to wait for that. Uh, Alzati, no. The uh, Basuma injury makes you think he could have come off the pitch maybe a bit earlier against Leicester. Do you regret that not happening then? Well, no, it's not that. I mean, it's, I think, I don't think it has necessarily made it any worse, as far as I know, and the, de the medical guys have said the same. It's just as soon as he was injured, there was going to be a bit of soreness afterwards. Um, sometimes it's hard to really assess at the time. I leave those decisions with the player and the medical team. Sure. Um, spectacular end to the match on Monday night, but also some unsavoury scenes at the end. Um, a mass confrontation on the pitch and then your players had to run the gauntlet of Palace fans getting to the tunnel. Um, suggestion they were spat at, had, had coins thrown at them and also drinks. Was it out of order? Well, I think it was a uh as you say a, a really emotional game and the way we scored at the end you can you can imagine there's emotion everywhere I think on the pitch in fairness uh, it, was, it was quite calm pretty quickly with the players there wasn't any 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 problem I didn't think you can understand if you just concede in the 96th minute that there's going people are going to be upset and you can see that if you've scored in the 96th minute and you're going to be happy so that's normal and I think just you know anybody knows the geography of Sellers Park and as you walk in it's the same for the supporters you can't really blame people for being um, uh, angry and passionate obviously what you don't want is it overstepping into stuff that is things are getting thrown or whatever else um, that's what we got to watch but in the end there was no problems everyone was safe we got in um, and obviously we're, we're happy with the with the with the point in the end we saw you though know, waiting to go down to the tunnel and it did look pretty ugly you're pretty content with what what happened there yeah well I wouldn't say content I just I, again I, it's it's not for me to speak about Crystal Palace in terms of how they organise their ground um, and, and the security they have. I mean, obviously, we all know that it's quite a small tunnel and you're right behind the goal. So, you know, it's these things are going to happen, especially on, especially when it's so emotive. Like, like I said, like a 96 minute winner is, or a goal, sorry, is, is um, it makes it really emotive and therefore it's very challenging for the environment. Sure. On to Arsenal then, um, a double over them in your first season in charge, but they did the uh, double over you guys last season. In the context of their resurgence, Graham, I mean, how do you see this fixture? Are you playing well enough to uh, get another win, do you think? I think it's a really tough game. I think they're, in the, obviously, they're in a really good moment because of their fantastic win against their, their big North London rivals. I think they got off to a... a a tough start. They had, you know, COVID, and you can see that the the team that they started against Brentford, even though, as you, as we've all seen, Brentford at home, first game back in the Premier League for seventy odd years, is a, is not an easy game. Then they play Chelsea, and then they play uh, Manchester City, and it's interesting how the narrative is. Uh, three wins later, you know, it's it's a bit of a clearer picture. You can see the quality that Arsenal have, fantastic young players, very well organised. Um, you know, deservedly won the game last time, so we know it's a tough match. And Mopay, of course, has scored a couple of winners against them, hasn't he? And after Monday night, I mean, he could be the man again to cause Arsenal problems. Would you agree? Well, we hope so. I'm sure Neil will hope so. I think, I think for us to get a positive result against Arsenal, we need a team. We need the team to play well because, uh, like I said, they're a you know high-quality uh, Premier League team. Um, with, with with some fantastic players and like I said you, you only have to see the game against Tottenham to see the quality that they have so we have to play really well as a team if, we, if we're going to get a result Just finally for me Graham you've resisted the temptation to put Lampsy back on the pitch so far in the Premier League is that just a reflection of how good Veltman's been so far and what are your thoughts about Lampsy on, on Saturday night against Arsenal? Well, it's a combination of things, Jeremy. I think he had 45 minutes against Swansea in in the cup, uh, and then we've Premier League ma matches. We are, we've had Leicester. If you saw the the game against Leicester, the, the way the game went, it didn't feel like it was the right time to to throw into that sort of situation. And the more time he has, the better for him and for us. 
Um, similarly to Crystal Palace as well. And obviously, Joel is a consideration in terms of how well he's done, but I think Tariq can play other positions as well. Uh, so you can have him and Joel on the pitch at the same time, no problem. So it's more just the right time for Tariq, the right game. But he's um, he's training hard. He's 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 getting stronger every day. So we're delighted that he's back in the in the group. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. Thank you. Graham, just to follow up on on Joel, there it will be a year on Sunday since he made his Premier League debut, and I wondered how impressed you've been with the way he's developed and evolved, and how important he's been, especially this season, to you. Uh, he's been important since he since he came in. T to be honest, he he's been a model professional, great guy. Um, yeah, he's, I think he's adapted to the league. I would say. I mean, you know, he's a guy that's played for Ajax in the Champions League semi final, played for Holland. You know, he's got a pedigree. He knows how to play football. That's for sure. And and the 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 only thing for him is to to adapt to a new league, a new club, a new country. Uh, and at that stage of his life, when you know Joel Veltman as a guy, as a character. It's it's no problem for him because he's 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 open minded. He's willing to take on the the challenge that it that that that, that newness provides, and um, he's been great for us. Really, has. There's obviously over the summer there was a gap left in the defence by Ben White's departure. How impressed and unsurprised have you been with the way he's settled in at, at this weekend's opponents, particularly after that difficult first game? No, exactly. I mean, it's um, as I said. I think whenever you move club, it's it's not a it's not a straightforward situation. You can't just hit the. We would like to, but it's not so easy to hit the ground running. I think um, you know. I think that Arsenal as a team had a tough game against against uh, Brentford, but that's the first game of the season. Like I said, they had lots of issues in terms of COVID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, not the perfect situation for him. But Ben's a resilient character. Um, Fantastic footballer, great guy. We we all love him here. So, apart from obviously the weekend, we wish him well, uh, and, and I'm sure he will do well. It was one of those things. I think everybody won from that situation. We got a good fee. They got a good player. Ben Ben gets a chance to to play at a you know a club that 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 he sees as a, a progression for him. So it was a, everybody everybody wins. And you mentioned the North London derby earlier. Were you able to learn much ahead of this weekend from that game, apart from? the obvious don't leave gaping holes in the midfield? Well, I think whenever you watch a game of football, you, you, you learn, there's always something there. Um, the, 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 the thing is, it's, it's a, what you have to remember is, it's a, obviously, it sounds obvious, but it's a completely different context again. The North London derby is what it is, um, but I think you can see um, Arsenal's quality, you can see the, the, the level of player that they have, the, the structure they have, the organisation they have and um, what we know and it's been reconfirmed is that they're a, you know, a top team and we have to play really well. But we're in a good place, we're in a good moment, we're at home, we, we want to be positive, we, we'll look forward to the game, we want to enjoy the game. Uh, it's a great challenge for us, great test, so we're looking forward to it. And I think last time out against Leicester it was a, it was a record crowd at the Amex and the, when Leicester were coming back into the game in that last 20 minutes. They, they, they really helped you, didn't they? What can you, you know, was that a particularly special atmosphere? Can you, can you urge them to do that again for you? I think it was. I think, um, I, I think we, we, you know, the team contributes to it because I think, you, you know, supporters, you, you've got to be fair to them. You've got to give them something to get behind. And I think we did that, and then they recognised, okay, we're struggling a little bit now, and now now they can help us. And for sure, if we if we want to uh, win at the weekend, if we want to get a positive result at the weekend, we, we'll need our supporters um, because, like I said, we're we're, we're facing a, a top team with top players that um, that the support of our you know our, our our fans will be really really important for us to get the result. Thank you. Graham, it seemed like a lot of emotional energy as well as physical energy was used up on, on Monday night. How important is it to sort of refocus and, and, and not be too drained from what happened at Selhurst Park? Yeah, I think you're right, Johnny. I think we've um, we've needed to recover from it because, like you said, it's uh, the guys put a lot into the game. They, they gave everything. Uh, I couldn't question their attitude, their their desire, their, their effort. Um, and then, of course, to score and the manner that we did and the time we did, it was a really emotional evening. 
Um, so we've, we, you know, we've just we've been, I think, quite good in terms of how we've recovered, and um, we'll be we'll be ready again tomorrow to to train and to, to to be prepared for the game against against Arsenal. But I think it was important to acknowledge that recovery time that was needed for the f from the game. In terms of Arsenal, are we starting to see Mikel Arteta put an impact, put his print imprint on this Arsenal squad? Well, yeah, I mean, I, th I think. Uh, I've I've seen it from from um, you know the previous seasons. I think like anything, it's n never a straight you know a straight line. Sometimes you get setbacks and things happen that that sometimes you you know from the outside you don't know you don't you don't know what happens and you have to deal with. I think you know you have to say Arsenal have you know, they've won a major trophy under Mikel, which is not not easy to do, and. Uh, the the team has has got some really exciting young players that are that played a really really high level and they and they've also got some some experience as well they've transitioning into somewhere that they like it's not easy to do because you have to move players out and contracts uh, make it you know you can't just clear them away so it's it's a uh, it's never going to be a straight line but um, clearly the performance against Tottenham gives everybody there I'm sure a lot of confidence and they'll be coming in a really good moment so we have to be prepared for that. Because they've made massive investment, haven't they? I mean, last week there was Pepe, Lacazette, Martinelli, all on the bench, didn't even get used. Oh, but they're pushing to get into the Champions League. Uh, you know, that's the ambition of the club, I guess. And when you do that, you have to, you know, you have to invest. Uh, you only have to see what the rest is spending. So it's it's normal um, if, if you want to have that ambition, which I'm sure a club like Arsenal does. And then it's about you know where you invest. If it's you invest in a bit of a younger player with a bit more um, not quite the finished article, then you, you you know that despite the investment, there's still some ups and downs that you have to go through. And that's where they need the patience of the club and the patience of everybody around, which I'm sure they've got. But Mikel's a top coach. He's a uh, he's he's been fantastic with Manchester City, and he's and he and he'll have learned a lot about the team and the club and his players over the last couple of years. And and like I said, the performance against Tottenham was very very impressive. Just finally, um, Kasper Ankergren is, is leaving the club. This is his last game. I know you haven't been here all that time, but an 11 year association with the club. Just what about the contribution that he's made to Brighton and Hove Albion? Well, I, I can just say that everybody here just, you know, loves him. I mean, he's just a great guy. Um, and I think that's that's the contribution that he's made as a player, as a, as a coach and as a person. I mean, it's just, um, you know, we'll, we'll, he'll always be welcome here, but he's been in a tough situation. Uh, his family are back in, in Denmark. Um, it's a young family. I, I think it's a, a great opportunity for him and he goes with our very best wishes and love and, and support. And like I said, um, you know, his, his contribution to what we've done here as a club before my time, but since I've been here has been fantastic. And personally, I'll miss him and um, wish him the best.